Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. A century ago, oil was the most valuable resource on earth. Today, in this digital age, personal data is described as the oil, a resource which is untapped and a valuable asset. For digital economies to function smoothly, data is believed to be the engine of growth. And that's why big companies spend billions of dollars to acquire and process consumer data. By gaining access to daily lives of millions of people across the world, companies are able to make huge gains in the digital advertising market. And for access to consumer data, big hacks and data breaches are reported every now and then. But this year has seen a huge surge in data breach incidents. News reports reveal Facebook has been sharing the contents of users' private messages with other companies on a scale far beyond what it has publicly admitted. Who did Facebook give data to? How did it manage to do so without anyone knowing it? And how has it affected the credibility of the global giant? We'll analyze today in depth. Since the Cambridge Analytica scandal in March, Facebook has insisted it does not sell data. But a recent report claims Facebook sold users' personal data to as many as 150 companies, mostly tech giants. Its data sharing deals with the companies violated a consent agreement with the Federal Trade Commission, as per which Facebook was required to strengthen privacy safeguards and disclose data practices more thoroughly. In 2004, a group of college friends created an innovative new social media platform that in later years became famous as Facebook. Thousands of schools, colleges and universities had access to it. By September 2006, the social media platform went fully global. And by October 2007, Facebook had over 50 million registered members. Facebook made fabulous success due to its focus on public relations. It provided users a platform to connect with friends, with engaging features, frequent upgrades, and easy-to-use techniques. It became extremely popular across the world. As of January 2018, Facebook served 2.2 billion active monthly users. And then the troubles tumbled out. In March, the multi-billion dollar company admitted a massive data breach affecting over 50 million people. It was revealed that Cambridge Analytica exploited Facebook to harvest millions of people's profiles and the social network had not alerted users even when it discovered the breach. Months later in July, the company had lost more than 100 billion in value. Its share price had dropped nearly 20%. And now, Facebook is accused of letting some of the world's largest technology companies have special access to users' personal data than it had previously disclosed. According to reports, Facebook gave 150 technology companies like Microsoft, Netflix and Spotify special access to user data without anyone else knowing. Once again, we've come out with another disclosure of a potential user data breach by a tech giant. Uh, it's not that Facebook is unique to it. It's not that private messages is the first time it has happened. It's a series of disclosures which are happening. The reports also said Facebook was still sharing streams of friends' posts with Yahoo till a few months ago, even after it claimed publicly that the practice stopped years ago. Documents reveal that the deals, the oldest of which date to 2010, were all active in 2017. Two things have happened. One is the tech giants have become bigger and hence more complicated and consolidated. Uh, and the other side, we are getting more and more reliant on social media for our daily activities. In between lies a bridge of trust. That bridge of trust is based on what I share remains where I want it to be shared. To punish Facebook for privacy violations, the Attorney General of the District of Columbia sued Facebook for allowing political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica to harvest private data of tens of millions of the social network's users. In its defense, Facebook published a blog post that said, and I quote, No third party was reading your private messages or writing messages to your friends without your permission. Many news stories imply we were shipping over private messages to partners, which is not correct, unquote. The latest scandal has made a group of shareholders call for Mark Zuckerberg's resignation as chairman. 
Shareholders have also filed a lawsuit alleging that executives failed to impose effective privacy safeguards. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Facebook, which is already facing scrutiny over how it handles private information of its users, has once again revealed about a fresh attack on its computer network, exposing the personal information of nearly 50 million users. What exactly is Facebook's massive data breach and how did this happen? We'll find out in our next report. Recent privacy problems severely escalated when it recently disclosed an unprecedented security issue. It impacted almost 50 million user accounts on September 25th this year. Unlike the Cambridge Analytica scandal, this vulnerability allowed attackers to directly take over user accounts. It was also the largest breach in the company's 14 years history. The question was what caused the user accounts to be compromised. Facebook said the vulnerability was introduced in July 2017 when it created a new video upload functionality. This triggered a spike in unusual activity. Facebook claims this was caused by attackers exploiting this feature that let people see what their own profile looks like to someone else. Facebook said the vulnerability was caused by a combination of three bugs that affected the access token of the users. According to the company, this is like a digital key that keeps you locked into Facebook so that every time you open the app, you don't need to re-enter your password. It, it impacts the users more than anything else. Uh, think about it. Gone are the times when we write, wrote postcards to people. We don't write anything. We don't write telegrams are out. You know, the, the telegram telegram, the telegram which used to be there. Yeah. Uh, it is replaced by a new app which is a telegram. So those days are gone. Today you send emails and most people are even, you know, for short messages, you don't even send emails. You send WhatsApp. You send uh, Facebook messages, Instagram messages. So in this world where we rely on these engines, these uh, communication platforms to not just hold our data, our life's entire history, but also uh, we do very close personal conversations uh, using the uh, channels which we are provided, uh, I think the breach of trust is huge because uh, if this goes on and people start losing faith on uh, say a Facebook communicator tool or even a WhatsApp soon, uh, how would we communicate then? But how did Facebook let its huge data give away to big tech is another question. According to the New York Times, under the terms of a 2011 consent agreement with the Federal Trade Commission, Facebook was required to strengthen privacy safeguards and disclose data practices. The company had independent firm Price Waterhouse Coopers to formally access its privacy procedures that said data sharing deals violated the consent agreement. However, Facebook has claimed it does not sell data. The NYT report suggests the company has been eager to barter for arrangements that could speed its growth. Facebook let some of the world's largest technology companies have more intrusive access to users' personal data. Facebook, uh, during a particular period especially, came up with certain uh, features for its advertisers. One of them was uh, instant personaliz personalization, which meant that uh, if, uh, if a user searches, uh, say, going to Turkey on a trip, then the results uh, which one gets on Facebook would also include their friends' recommendation, what their friends have done. Also what Facebook did is that certain apps such as uh, Spotify, Netflix, uh, Bank of Canada and many others, you could log in using your Facebook, but didn't stop there. You could also send messages from the Spotify app to your friends on Facebook. So the Facebook Messenger, Spotify fed into Facebook Messenger and this Facebook Messenger was sending messages on your behalf. What it meant is that your entire private message was now exposed to Spotify or Netflix or many other companies. What we don't know is what happened with these messages. Most users, uh, when they, uh, you know, when you chat privately on Facebook, you expect that the messages remains between you and the person with whom you're chatting. So it's a very private space. But it was not the case because if you have shared it on Spotify once, all your private chats are now exposed to not just reading, but deleting and sending new messages from third party apps. According to the NYT report, Facebook allowed Microsoft's binge search engine to see names of virtually all Facebook users' friends without consent. It also gave Netflix and Spotify the ability to read private messages of users. Further, Amazon was allowed to obtain users' names and contact information through friends. Facebook empowered Apple to hide from all users all indicators 
that its devices were asking for data. In fact, by 2013, Facebook had entered into more such partnerships. As of last year, Yahoo could view real-time feeds of friends' posts for a feature that the company had ended in 2011. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In March this year, the online world was rocked with one of the largest data breach scandals. Facebook, the world's largest social media platform, which was trusted by millions of people with their private information, pictures and videos, overnight became a cause of concern for sharing data with a voter profiling firm, Cambridge Analytica, which ran Donald Trump's campaign in the US and Brexit vote campaign in the UK. In this report, we take a look at the details of the massive data breach controversy. In March this year, the real face of the biggest social media platform, Facebook, was revealed as the world's largest data leak unraveled. Facebook was accused of sharing private data of millions of its users with Cambridge Analytica, a London-based elections consultancy for political purposes. All this while, unsuspecting users continued to share their personal information on Facebook. On March 17, 2018, The Guardian and The New York Times lifted the lid off the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal. It was revealed that Cambridge Analytica had harvested the personal data of millions of people's Facebook profiles. The data was allegedly used for political campaigns supported by Cambridge Analytica, including the 2016 US presidential election and the Brexit vote. Cambridge Analytica also reportedly used the data for US Senator Ted Cruz's campaign in December 2015. Facebook uh, and as a series of uh, you know uh, rolling stones have come out out of Facebook's closets. Uh, first, we had the Cambridge Analytica issue, which uh, affected the U.S. election, uh, which also affected Facebook's uh, stocks in a big way. Uh, and then, following uh, Cambridge Analytica was in May, uh, which is less heard story. In May 2018, uh, Facebook had to delete almost 55% of its users because they were all fake. The information revealed by none other than ex-Cambridge Analytica employee Christopher Wiley showed how the users were hoodwinked in the name of a benign survey. The revelation created huge public outcry. Alexander Kogan, a data scientist at Cambridge University and his company Global Science Research Limited, developed an app called This Is Your Digital Life in 2014. The app made users take a survey for academic purposes. However, the app collected data not only of the people taking the survey, but also the personal information of all the people in that user's Facebook network. The details were then shared with Cambridge Analytica. In this way, Cambridge Analytica acquired the data of over 50 million Facebook users. Facebook later confirmed that it actually had data on up to 87 million users. 70.6 million of those people were from the United States. The data breach allowed the voter profiling firm to develop techniques to help US President Donald Trump's campaign in 2016. The firm also accessed data of over a million British users trying to influence the Brexit vote. If that data is accessed to other companies, have, as we have seen in the Cambridge Analytica case, in that case, data was shared and the democratic process was compromised. After the expose, the Federal Trade Commission opened an investigation into the violation of user privacy by Facebook. In April 2018, Mark Zuckerberg faced a joint session of the U.S. Senate, Commerce and Judiciary Committees to respond to some hard questioning on the data breach. Zuckerberg blamed Alexander Kogan, who sold the data to Cambridge Analytica, for violating Facebook's terms of service. On 2 May 2018, Cambridge Analytica announced they were closing and starting insolvency proceedings. Its CEO, Alexander Nix, had already stepped down in the wake of the charges. Zuckerberg also apologized to the users, saying, we didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility and that was a big mistake. It was my mistake and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it and I am responsible for what happens here. 
Cambridge Analytica's parent company SCL Group and Alexander Kogan's Global Science Research Limited are now facing data breach charges in both the US and the UK. With inputs from Aastha Kulshreshth, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program. We'll be right back. विदेश जाने वाले भारतीय श्रमिकों के लिए जरूरी सलाह पर देश में नौकरी पाने के लिए केवल विदेश मंत्रालय के साथ पंजीकृत भर्ती एजेंटों के माध्यम से ही जाएं। फर्जी एजेंटों के जरिए न जाएं, वरना आप फंस सकते हैं। जाते समय किसी भी व्यक्ति द्वारा दिया गया कोई भी पैकेट लेकर न जाएं, आप फंस सकते हैं जिस काम के लिए जा रहे हैं उसका थोड़ा प्रशिक्षण अवश्य लेकर जाए परदेश में नौकरी पाओ तो सुरक्षित जाओ प्रशिक्षित जाओ विदेश पहुंचते ही भारतीय दूतावास से संपर्क करें परदेश में आपका दोस्त भारतीय दूतावास विदेश मंत्रालय द्वारा जनहित में जारी टेल्स दैट इंस्पायर स्टोरीज ऑफ सोशल चेंज सल्यूट टू डाइवर्सिटी Promoting public discourse, events that motivate, inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. labyrinth of hundreds of narrow stairway passages is a significant and historical component of what you popularly know as Bara Imam Bara. Some of these narrow stairways have dead ends, some end at precipitous drops while others lead to entrance or exit points. Historically Bhul Bhulaya was constructed to confuse the enemy intruder and the narrow lanes of the labyrinth can make anyone feel lost. The structure contains various strategically built hollows in the corridors. Welcome back. You're watching in depth. Social media has come with several serious security risks for individuals as well as businesses. Among other problems, it provides a significant unprotected channel for data leaks. It also tempts people into oversharing confidential information and provides hackers with information that greatly assists them in breaching organizations. More details in our next report. People have been trusting big firms such as Google and Facebook with their personal data for years. They offer their location data to Google, information about preferences to Facebook so that they can be targeted with personalized advertising. But these companies are proving they can't be trusted with people's data. Google discovered that between 2015 and March 2018, outside developers would have been able to potentially access personal information on its Google Plus profile data due to software glitch. Using the uh, channels which we are provided, uh, I think the breach of trust is huge because uh, if this goes on and people start losing faith on uh, say a Facebook communicator tool or even a WhatsApp soon, uh, how would we communicate then? Because we've already foregone what used to exist with us. So I think uh, the challenge is huge and then you're not even phone calls. I mean, uh, a few uh, last year we came out with a case where Apple uh, had a trouble with the US government where he was supplying data phone calls to US governments without telling its users. So this has been an electronic age does expose humankind and uh, our, you know common people to a lot of surveillance and a lot of uh, these targeted advertisements which are often done without them knowing. 
Amazon prides itself on security and Apple has topped in a privacy survey. Apple has historically been vocal about protecting user information while also working with law enforcement when they have legal requests for data. Both Apple and Amazon have been implicated in the recent China spy chip scandal, but they have denied the claims. By the law, then Facebook did make these users agree to the usage of uh, the terms, whichever, whether it is message sharing, whether it is information about their friends. So it is there somewhere embedded. But uh, legality is also in terms of how does one uh, uh, one present this to the, the information to the user, whether they were told explicitly, whether they knew it. Facebook was probably aware of the fact that most people would not even read it and would not be even aware of uh, such a thing happening. So I'm not sure it is illegal, but it is definitely something which borderlines unethical behavior and immorality. And that is extremely important. That is reflected in the stocks. The stocks did not tank because uh, Facebook was doing something illegal. It's not proven yet. What stocks tanked and a lot, I mean, a one, one and a half lakh crore is a lot of money which Facebook has lost in a day is because this was not found to be um, something which is morally correct. If the likes of Apple, Google, Facebook and Amazon want people to continue to use their services, they need to demonstrate how they protect the data. If an event does happen, their response is what matters. But for now, it's up to the users to decide which technology companies they trust. Proliferation of social media has accustomed people to sharing more personal and professional data than ever before. Data sharing by Facebook because it has been shared with the Amazon also. So uh, those companies who are getting the data may be getting the undue advantage of the data. So that comes within the uh, competition commission uh, jurisdiction also and that may amount to the uh, some sort of monopoly on the data. So it may be good for the few e-commerce companies but it may be uh, it may have some adverse impact on the other rival companies. Secondly uh, regarding cyber crimes. But the problem is that social media platforms do little to prevent the creation and use of phony social media profiles. By impersonating legitimate businesses and real people, criminals can trick unsuspecting parties into providing personal or business details that can be used for financial crimes or identity theft. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV And that's it from us in today's edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and get back to us with your feedback and suggestions. Thanks for your time.